Hey there all you rotting corpses hanging from trees. We are at the Scarlet Monastery for the next part of the series. You know which is this. It is going to be the Armoury. Because that's what we're on now. And uh, this guy's looking pretty badass with his uh, tier, one uh, tier 1 warrior gear going on. I'll just give him a hand here. Not that he needs a hand. He is a, a warrior. Level 60. But yeah. So I've already run Armoury and I'm a bit high level for it. But I have a group and I've got loads of rested XP. And... Um, I didn't have much stuff to do, so I thought, why the hell not? I think we've got one guy who's already in the monastery. We've got somebody at the Stone Talon Mountains. What the hell is he doing there? He's flying, it looks like, but I have no idea what he's doing there. He was in Shimmering Flats a minute ago. So we've got one guy coming to us, one guy inside. Well, it looks like I'm going to be waiting for a little bit, but it doesn't matter because I have you fine people for company, and... I have also got Alien on DVD, which I am watching in the background, and there's nothing much better than that. But anyway, guys, so today we're going to be doing the armory. I have the key, thankfully. I bet somebody doesn't have the sodding key. Um, am I just able to just stealth around these guys? They're only level 31. I could probably just take one out, to be honest, if they're uh, elite. There we go. I'll wait for him to turn around, and I will unlock the door, because there's nothing more satisfying than using the Scarlet Key. Here we go, and I will just, oh god, loads of corpses around here, and I'll just run inside, and uh, oh, two of us are waiting in here. Right, well, we will wait for our next members to arrive, we've got a nice uh, party going on here, another another rogue, funnily enough, but uh, he's level 35, so he ain't got nothing on me, he can't see me, but anyway, yeah, I will see you very shortly. Okay, I think we're just going to start pulling without this warlock because he's still just in Algramar. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But uh, yeah, he must have been really far away when you got the summons that we were ready to go. But yeah, this dungeon is well known for its final boss, Herod, which I think is something that's obvious to say. I think most people who are watching this video know full well who Herod is. He is the kind of the iconic, one of the most iconic warriors of the game. I just cheap shotted that guy, lol. Oh, and this warlock, he keeps logging off and saying, like, he keeps relogging. This is the second time he's done it, and it's like, w why? Why do so? But anyway, yeah, Herod is an iconic warrior, and this dungeon is a big step in the kind of career, in the path of every warrior because of the weapon that he drops. The, uh, I can't remember what exactly it's called, but the Ravager, I think it is. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of trash in it. Uh, the dungeon goes on for a very long time. You've got to go through various kind of little walkways, these quadrangles that you've got here, as well as like corridors and little alcoves full of myrmidons and all kinds of shit like that. And I'll obviously be cutting most of that out and just showing you like a bit of progress through the dungeon. But the main feature of this dungeon is just the final boss, just because he's kind of iconic. It's one that I think everybody would want to see as part of this playthrough. And yeah, it should be really good. Not that I think I'll get any loot for him. I think the big loot for me will be when I complete the the Into the Scarlet Monastery quest, manage to get the Sword of... What is it? Sword of Omen? Yeah, this. I cannot wait to get that. It's going to be so, so good. There's nothing better when you're playing vanilla than getting a weapon upgrade, and I mean that wholeheartedly. This game really does feel like an RPG, which is nice. And speaking of RPGs, after I upload this, I think I will start making the first part of the new Oblivion playthrough that I've been wanting to do for a while. Just because, you know, I've been looking for something else to play alongside vanilla WoW, and uh, I've got the time, so why not? But yeah, we're just cutting these guys down now. I think that most of the guys in this party are of the perfect level range. Usually, you find with Scarlet Monastery, people try to get in get in a little bit early. Um, there's the Warlock back, but I think we're quite good. I think the lowest one we've got is the Rogue. He's 35, which isn't that bad. Um, I am... Come on. There we go. I am level 38. The Warlock... Like, the Warlock's level 38. The Warrior's 37. And our priest is 38 too, and it's just the rogue at level 35, but you know, shouldn't really matter too much. And uh, I'm hopefully going to get these levels up soon. I need to start putting some gold together for uh, 
for a mount because you see as you can see here i've got wound poison and crippling poison and this is the thing for uh, i've been recording this this dungeon episode i record part of it this after i recorded some footage that was supposed to go in between library in this video like i was questing in dust swallow marsh and i'm still going to upload that alongside some skull uh, some stranglethorn um i keep thinking that that's where my throwing knife is but i've rebound it i was gonna upload um dusk dusk the dusk the marsh alongside this video but halfway through it ooh, ooh nice um let us greet oh well good luck to that guy but anyway um i was gonna upload this dusk the marsh video and partway through, I had to do a little bit of PvP, and because people have been asking for PvP, I decided at that point that I was going to um, try and queue for a BG. Tried to queue, took ages, didn't even get in, didn't get a BG after queuing for about 25 minutes. I queued for like 15 minutes um, in, I think that's Saul here. I'm not sure, why did he come out there? Alright, strange. Anyway, um, oh, it's this weird bug where people can't see each other. Anyway, yeah, uh, a queue for Warsong Gulch for 15 minutes and a Rappy Basin for 15 minutes and didn't get into either. So I think people just must not be queuing at this level. It's kind of a weird level, period 30 to 39. But I will try to get some, I will definitely do some PvP videos when I get to level 60. I've kind of been looking forward to it, to be honest, even though I'm not that massive of a PvPer. But the point that I'm making is, is that I end up spending about 8 gold on getting loads of these abilities, like things like Kidney Shot and stuff. And I'm just going to put it at Shift 3 for now because I'm not really using it. And uh, I've got these poisons and made loads of these poisons in preparation for having to do like a, um, a PvP encounter, like a BG. And so <laughs> I wasted loads of the gold that I'll need to spend on my mount. But, you know, boohoo, these things happen. Anyway, I kind of need to put my poisons back on. I just realised that I'm so bad for it. People are going to be screaming at me like, get your fucking poisons off. But yeah, um... But yeah, I mean, I like I like the idea of doing some BGs, but you know, I'll have to just get to a point where, like, loads of level sixties are queuing for them. So I mean, it'll definitely be on the cards at that point in time. So that's good. So right now we're just clearing through this trash, and after we kill this guy, I will make a little cut in the video and pick it up when we get a bit further in, because, like I said, this dungeon is a lot longer than it seems. It really is a lot longer than it seems, and trash takes a lot longer than it does nowadays in retail wow but let me just open this chest to see what's in it like a true rogue my partner here went straight over and opened it without even rolling for it you're gonna roll for that stuff what do you mean two tin all there for someone what a cunt all right okay i see that we're just uh Right. Oh, I have no idea what the fuck's uh, going on there. In all, every dungeon I've encountered, it's a case of rolling for who opens a chest, but whatever. I don't really give a fuck. All that was in there was a bow, but you know I mean? Like I just said, I need all the money I can get. That being said, I have found a few ways of getting money and of, of kind of farming some money in this. And I think I'm going to try them out. But anyway, I will put the small cut in here and pick it up a little bit further in the dungeon. Okay, so we're a little bit further in, um, cleared that quadrangle out, and as you can see, the thing about fighting in Monastery is that a lot of it is like what you would call in the military, quote, uh, close quarter battle, like you've got you to get in quite close to the enemy, and it's in a sense kind of like, um, it reminds me a little bit of like these old stealth games and stuff, because you've got to kind of work a lot around the themes of taking on small groups at a time, it's like what I've been saying a lot, Whilst there are not as many mechanics in Vanilla WoW, there's certainly an emphasis on things like crowd control. Because if you pull, like, five mobs, you're probably going to wipe unless you've got a, either an outstanding group or you're higher level than the dungeon needs you to be. Like, um, we've got to watch out for pulling those two and stuff like that. It's not a good idea. It's highly not recommended. And it's partially why the dungeons seem a lot more kind of epic in terms of their length. Um... <clears throat> I like how that guy's he's using the sword at the moment. It just shows how cool it is. I like the way the pommel is too. It's quite a nice, chunky sword. Um, it'll be my first, you know, proper weapon that I look back and think, yay, that was my badass weapon of the of the playthrough. But yeah, here's another example. Like, um, you've got to just take things in moderation because 
there's patrols as well, you know? You can't be taking loads of patrols whilst you're taking little mob packs and things like that. But yeah, as you can see, just looking at the minimap, it is very much a snaking dungeon. It's filled with these just little packs of mobs. Usually a couple of different ones. You get like guardsmen, you get myrmidon, protectors, disciples, and they all kind of complement each other. So you've got to prioritize like our tank is doing, which is good of him. Um, and we've got our warlock here dishing out some CC with the help of his succubus. It's just... You know, like, people talk about how the game is more advanced mechanically in retail, which is true. And to be honest with you, it's more fun to play a lot of the classes in retail because they're more kind of a developed. But, like, I will never agree with people who say that it takes, that, that like, the players are, are just better, outright better now in retail than they are, in uh, than they were, rather, in vanilla. Because the simple fact is, is that vanilla acquired a level of dedication and the level of patience that I think a lot of players um, don't have now. Players will leave a group from an LFG group they've joined just because somebody, like, fails on a single boss or they wipe. Groups will spend literally hours forming and running dungeons in vanilla and n there will be no problems even though you have to go through all that strenuous, like, time-consuming activity. It's it's very strange. You'd expect the opposite to be true. You'd expect people to be kind of really civil and, you know, let's get this done quickly with the LFG system. just doesn't seem to be the case, fully enough. Don't think you're surprised if you're like me. But, yeah. Um, we've got a good tank here. He knows what he's doing. Scout Mysa or Miska? I don't know. I don't know. I like some of the names here. Azadeth is a cool name for a rogue. I will give him that. He did go full on crazy bastard with that chest earlier. And I, like a true rogue, got all angry because, you know, rogues love our shinies. Um, but Cracklock has to take it for the best name. Like Cracklock, I'm loving it. Because it, it, it sounds like he's a badass gangster. You know, at the same time, it sounds that he may be a drug dealer and may be a crazy warlock. And all of those things make for a very strange but interesting character. In my opinion, anyway. But none of it compares to Malevolous, the main man with the devil horns. I need to keep this helmet, don't I? I need to keep this helmet. I just, I do really love it. It reminds me of the Earth Shatterer gear that the Shamans get later on. But yeah, as you can see, guys, we're just pushing on here. I will catch up with you when we get a little bit further into the dungeon. Okay, so we're a little bit further on. If you look on the minimap, you can actually see Herod's little crucible as I like to call it on the end. I always looked at these cannons here and thought to myself, why don't we just fucking fire one and just waste these bastards? But you know, it's something that we never seem to do. They're there, whatever. <clears throat> and then they kind of gave a little bit of a homage to the cannons when they redid Scarlet Monastery by having them fire all the time. Because you know, that makes a hell of a lot of sense, firing the cannons indoors. Well, like, it makes sense for us to do it, but they fire the cannons at us in their own monastery. It's like, what are you trying to do, demolish the place? Yeah, I wasn't the I wasn't the biggest fan of the redid Scarlet Monastery to be honest. Like I said in the other videos, I always thought that Scarlet Monastery was kind of one of those things which should remain untouched and pure, like uh, and like well like Molten Core in a sense or Max Ramus, but you know they brought Molten Core back in an LFR. But then again, the LFR Molten Core wasn't that bad actually. I kind of enjoyed it when I did it with a friend in Wad. It kind of made me miss <laughs> Vanilla a lot, sadly, but you know. Whatever. Um, so yeah, we're kind of close to the end. We've got a hall, and we've got one more kind of roundabout thing here with these portcullises. I don't know. If they shut the portcullises, this place would be impossible to siege, but I don't know what the point is in having them all. I think the purpose is to show that, yeah, we're tough and we're mean. This is the armory. We have iron gates and cannons pointed at you. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So... After this, we will have Cathedral, and then we will have finished the Monastery, and I think that that will be a major stepping stone in our playthrough, especially because I get that badass sword, and no, I will not stop going on about it, because it looks absolutely awesome. Oh god, so much trash around here, I've got to be quite careful. But yeah, I will kill these two, and then we will put a cut in it, and I will keep it back on when we get to Herod himself, before we get to Herod's door. And uh, hopefully, we will see our good friend the warrior here get his axe, which should be great for him. Got quite a nice DPS group. I remember I did this when I was like level 36 and uh, it took a lot longer than this. But that was mainly because my group was uh, all lower than level 36 I think. Or around that level anyway. There were no level 38s and stuff like we have here. This group's actually quite perfect for it. 
and the fact that we've got um, <clears throat> the fact that we've got two rogues, and this war uh, warlock actually knows what he's doing really helps. But anyway, I will um, pick it up once we get to, to Herod. Okay, we have just got one pack left to kill, and then it will be time for us to attack Herod. And you can see here what it is we've been doing to get to these packs of mobs, because some of them are really tough. What we've been doing is, uh, while it's been mind controlling one, letting two of them kill that guy, then we've been nuking the other two down. Uh, it's not really necessary when you've got a group this high level, but it's always nice to see people doing, like, I don't know, coming up with tactics and stuff like that. So here we go. Just nice to show you this. This just shows, you know, people using, like, extra abilities in vanilla because it really does help you, and it not only does it save time, but also it saves wiping. And it's just nice to see people doing things that you wouldn't normally do. So here we go. Our man here is going to be killed. He's going to sacrifice himself so we don't have to fight three. And then we will take on this skulled guy because meanwhile the warlock is nuking this guy down. And uh, they will run over here. And we are just going to absolutely destroy this guy who, you know, <laughs> that one over there is kind of um, seduced or whatever. And uh, he's charmed. And now we only had to fight one at the time we only had to fight two rather than three just goes to show you know that's perfect execution of um of tactics and it's just nice to see that happen so i've got the scarlet key and i will be having the honor of opening this door and reviewing the sights within because it really is quite a nice well-designed room with lots of nice law stuff inside it so what is this here strength increased oh nice so with this guy dead let me open the door And it shall be me who takes the honours. And here we are. This is Herod's sort of little sanctum. And uh, you got to be careful here. Because if you walk in, like the tank says, he will aggro. Because Herod is the most roidy, aggressive motherfucker you will ever meet in this game. Right. Okay. Uh, and people make a huge deal of like the mobs that come afterwards, but you know, they're so low level, it doesn't really matter. Right. Ah, real challenge. Yeah, too much of a challenge for you actually, Herod, mate. You're gonna get fucked up. Sorry, y you are incredibly large for a human. You're bigger than an orc. Significantly bigger. Oh, and there we go. There's the Herod signature move. Just enjoy that. <laughs> I like how he just spins. Yeah, it's not as, um... Oh god, it's not as deadly as it is in other versions where he actually moves. Because in this one, you just have to get out of the way of him. But you know, it's nice. I can remember the first time I saw that, I was like, "What the fuck is he doing?" <coughs> right. So now he's kind of gone into a uh, roid mode. He's just taken some stims, and he's ravaging again. So let's move away. I'm just gonna put this on for the sake of it. Am I out of throwing knives? Oh god, I am as well. Got none left. I'm gonna have to buy some new throwing axes. Well, that's something nice to do. But yeah, um, and he, he is a bit of a challenge, Herod. To, he couldn't do this if he had a low-level group. He would be absolutely toasted. And look how massive he is now. He's absolutely huge. He's like Tor in size. Ridiculous. And I will finish him off with a nice viscerate. Bang. There you go. Half a K. Living it. And he dropped his helmet. Shame I can't use that either. But, you know. This is a tank boss. But anyway, here we go. Here's the bit that people always worry about, even though it's fucking easy. Literally just these guys. It's like, they're level 30s. They're just normal level 30 people, that's all. It's nothing to be scared of. But anyway, guys, that's the dungeon. Pretty much done, yeah. Uh, I will just give you a time to have a look around here. These are the kind of heroes of the Scarlet Monastery that are all over the place, most of which are how we're lost, fighting demons and or the Scourge. Some of them kind of disappeared to Northrend, and some of them, I think one of them went to Outland because I had a look last time just to recap. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Short episode. I will be doing Cathedral probably tonight, and I have that other episode I was telling you about with uh, the Swallow Marsh and Stranglethorn Vale. But until then, guys, thank you very much as always for watching. My name has been Mittens. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.